Is the cap toe style of Red Wings found in the Iron Ranger better than the mock toe style found in the 8138s or the 875s? Well, the cap toe style is more historic, but the mock toe is what made Red Wing more famous. Well, nevertheless, the cap toes have these great quick tie eyelets, and they're a more formal style anyway. Yeah, but nothing beats a pair of mock toes broken in. I guess we'll have to take a closer look. Two of Red Wing Boot's most popular heritage styles are the cap toe boot represented in this field by the 8111 Iron Ranger and the mock toe boot represented by the 8138 mock toe boot which is basically a darker leather version of the 875. In my respective reviews of these boots which I've previously done, I've gone in depth explaining the historical differences of the working boot in the Iron Ranger and the sportsman's boot in the mock toe boot. But one thing I haven't done is taken these boots side by side and looked at the construction. Now of course the boot making craft is hundreds of years old and anyone who's really interested in heritage boots probably would do well to get familiar with the details in differences of construction in these boots. And thankfully Red Wing themselves has done a great job of breaking down some of the basics of construction which I'm going to be covering and showing you in detail with these specific boots that I have with me today. Let's begin by taking a look at the different cuts of leather on these boots. Now, Obviously the cutting process is going to be basically the same, but the different kinds of leather that are used are going to vary. Now of course both of these styles of boots come in a variety of leather styles and so I'm not going to be talking about the specific leathers on these boots. That's something I cover in the review, but I'll be talking more about the size and the style of leather cuts that you'll see in these boots respectively. Let's start with the top and move down and forward. Obviously with the 8138s you have a small piece of leather that works as a piece of piping at the top of the boot. This does have a slight rounding effect which makes it easier for the heel to slip in but it is easily the thinnest leather in the whole boot's construction. Now with the Iron Rangers you actually have a collar of leather stitched all around the inside of the boot. This is obviously much more robust but it's one of the many ways that this boot becomes heavier. In the 6 inch style of boots, the vamp is basically the side of the boot and in the 8138s you have a large vamp which is stitched with a heel counter on the inside of the boot. It goes all the way up to the top of the ankle. And there's a large leather strip which I think is elegantly stitched with quad stitching down the back. It's a relatively thin strip but definitely adds strength where it's needed. Now on the Iron Rangers it appears that the vamp is smaller but what's actually happened is there's just been extra leather added to both the heel counter which is on the outside of this boot and then to the cap toe in the front. Basically this makes the vamp appear smaller but overall it's definitely a sturdier way of constructing the boot. There's just more leather that's used. Looking at the different cuts of leather in these boots, it's no surprise that the Iron Ranger is quite a bit heavier. But one way that the mock toes are more complex is, of course, in the toe box. The mock toe or moccasin style is one that is definitely wide and conforms to the shape of a man's foot very nicely. Whereas the cap toe style was really a precursor to the steel toe boot. And this is something that was really referenced in this style of Iron Rangers. They're meant to be really sturdy and heavy, so it's going to take a little bit longer to break in compared to the mock toes, or even compared to round toe boots like the Beckmans. Both of these boots have thin gusseted tongues, which is good because it's going to make lacing easy. Now notably with the Iron Rangers, the gusset happens after the third eyelet, whereas with the mock toes it's after the second eyelet. Taking into consideration the piping at the collar, the higher gusseted tongue, and the overall lighter weight of the Mach 2 boots, it sort of fits with the sportsman type purpose that was originally intended for the Mach 2 boots. Whereas with the Iron Rangers, the redundancy in leather in the collar, in the heel, and in the toe is much more directed to the reference of the working man's type boot and of course the Iron Rangers, which the boot is named after. Of course, like the rest of the boots, the footbeds are full grain leather. In the Mokto boots, it's a one-piece footbed, and in the Iron Rangers, it's a two-piece footbed. As for the fitting of these boots or how these boots are stitched together, of course, they're both stitched together on Puritan sewing machines, but you do see differences in emphasis in the construction nevertheless. 
With the 8138, of course, you have very robust triple stitching in the vamp and then a very large thick thread for the mock toe. This, of course, is supposed to be waterproof for outdoorsmen. This was especially made for waterfowl hunting, so it needed to be a very robust stitch for that toe box. Now with the Iron Rangers, you have the same triple stitching for the last and quality stitching throughout the boot, but you also have the addition of quad stitching for that toe cap, which is really over the top. One place that it's very clear to see there's different stitching used is on the inside of the boot. On the 8138s, you can see that there's a very light zigzag stitch and then a very light stitch for the heel counter, which is on the back. Whereas in the Iron Ranger, it's much heavier throughout. Obviously, the exterior piece of leather on the heel counter is going to need a lot heavier stitching in addition to having the main parts of the vamp sewn together. On the inside midsection of both of these boots, there is a liner, a stitched in liner, which is triple stitched along with the vamp, and I definitely prefer the all leather liner on the 8138s. They've definitely broken into my feet very nicely and are very comfortable. Now on the Iron Rangers, there is a cloth fabric over the what I think is a hard leather vamp which gives the boot more structure but you can see it's starting to fray and it's just one area where I feel like maybe there was some cost cutting or something it just isn't as comfortable. You could argue that the cloth liner might wick away moisture a little bit but I think that would only really be relevant in a very hot climate when you probably wouldn't want to be wearing all leather boots anyway. Overall, I would say that the stitching is equally well executed in both of these boots with no stray strings or obvious mistakes, and they're both equally robust in areas that count the most. In the back, where there's definitely more robust stitching in the Iron Ranger, there's not really any impact on comfort, but I definitely think that the inside of the mock toe boots are a little bit cleaner. At any rate, there's nothing superfluous about any of the stitching, and it's very much meant to service the purpose of these boots. Now one way in which these boots differ in a more fundamental way is in the last. This is the thing that is going to give the boot its fundamental shape or form. And in the Red Wing 8138s, you have last number 45 specifically for mock toe boots, whereas in the Iron Ranger you have old last number 8, which is a very long last. With the 8138s, the toe box is wide, there's room to move around, it definitely is very comfortable to bend that toe box, and also the vamp is really conformed to the shape of your ankle. These boots, for me, are definitely the more nimble of the two boots in this comparison. My experience with the Iron Rangers is that they're definitely a bit narrower and a bit longer. Break-in definitely took longer for these boots, and once they were broken in, they didn't have as much of a feeling of exact conformity to the shape of your foot that I felt like the mock toes really came out in spades with. And although the Iron Rangers are by no means dress boots, the fact that the leather was basically not as heavily wrinkled as the mock toe boots, it definitely allows them to be worn in a slightly more formal setting. I also forgot to mention that one thing that contributes to the weight of the Iron Rangers is the fact that it has a steel shank when the mock toes don't. Now with the bottom of these shoes, they both have traditional Goodyear welts, which I've explained in detail in previous videos. In the mock toe style, you have a traction tread outsole, a single piece outsole, which is very rubbery and a bit softer than the sole in the Iron Rangers. And basically this is going to be made this way so that it's a little bit more slip resistant and it's better for environments where it's going to be possibly wet. I definitely prefer these boots in the rain or in the snow. They definitely have held up great as far as the stitching goes. I think the Goodyear weld is a fantastic weld. It's never failed me. And the traction tread sole itself is taking a lot of beating, but it's still very comfortable. Now, of course, the Iron Rangers have the nitrile cork outsoles, which is a harder rubber outsole with apparently cork mixed in in the composition of the outsole. It obviously is a bit more formal with the stitching on the bottom and has that distinctive heel on the back. I think that out of the two, I prefer the comfort of the traction tread outsole. And although I've been wearing my Iron Rangers fairly frequently this winter, especially in ice, they are pretty much useless. You just have to be really careful. 
One aspect of construction I haven't talked about are the nickel eyelets on both of these boots. The quick eyelets on the Red Wing Iron Rangers definitely make it a little easier for these boots to get put on. Once the boots are on your feet, they definitely lace up quickly. And they're definitely a boot that I think is very versatile, works great with a pair of jeans as you can see here. But I will occasionally dress these up with a pair of chinos. I definitely enjoy these boots and the experience of wearing them is something that's definitely set apart from the Mokto boots that I think that they're very complimentary in a collection. I've probably been wearing the Iron Rangers more than the Mokto boots since I've got them just because I feel like they're a little bit more versatile but it's definitely true that these boots require a little bit more commitment to get them broken in properly at least that's been my experience. Now both of these boots come with 48 inch laces of different styles and on the Mach 2 boots you have to unlace those top eyelets to be able to get your foot into the boot at least for me. But once my foot is actually in the boot I definitely prefer the feel of the Mach toes on my feet. They just conform a lot more to the shape of my ankle as well as my toes once they were broken in. They're a bit more lightweight I think that's due to the lack of a steel shank mostly and I prefer the traction tread outsoles just because they're a bit more versatile in different environments. Now of course the the mock toe style doesn't have the aero formality that perhaps the Iron Rangers or round toe red wing boots or heritage boots have, but they definitely have a very distinctive style which I think continues to just be iconic and I love that. Now as far as waterproofing goes, both of these boots can be totally waterproof with the right use of traditional waterproofing methods. And really, in the end of the day, both of these boots are just about your preferred style and what you think might suit your needs best. Personally, I just love them both. If you enjoyed this comparison, make sure to like this video. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks a lot. So this is just a little addendum for my loyal subscribers. I think of you as triple fivers. And anyone else who happened to make it to this video. So just wanted to let you know that I'm continuing to experiment with a variety of techniques that I basically have never done before. I'm trying out something new here on the channel, trying to make it a little bit more interesting and also trying to grow as a videographer. I'm definitely just a complete amateur and am experimenting a lot with tripods and different sound setups and different kinds of shots. Uh, so for example, I am shooting this on my Canon 60D now. Um, I'm definitely struggling getting the focus stuff exactly on point here. I want to get a shallow depth of field, but keep me really sharp. And so I've been, you know, trying different apertures and stuff. Uh, some of the previous videos I shot were on a 50 millimeter prime. This is on an 18 to 135. Uh, just let me know what you think of the different looks in the comments below if you know you've been paying attention. I'm also shooting this on a Rode Video Micro. This is a, a hot shoe mic for the Canon 60D or any DSLR camera. Just curious to see what you think of the sound here. It's just about arm's reach away from me and it's a very easy setup to use so if it sounds okay I'm going to probably be using it more. I have a new intro. That was something I just threw together. Hopefully it's a little bit more telling about what this channel is about. You'll also notice that in my thumbnails the so-called 555 gear flag which I just kind of created in a app on my phone as a little you know bright tag to indicate that this was my video in the thumbnails is replaced with something that has the, the triple five but it's more of a film shape now and the goal with that is just a reminder for me frankly that I want to focus on videography for 2016 and I think it maybe fits in more with some of the graphics of uh, the rest of the channel. Just wanted to let you know I'll be probably talking a little bit more behind the scenes at the end of the videos along with my everyday carry stuff which I have done in previous videos but uh, just really appreciate your support and uh, give me feedback as you're seeing some of the changes in the channel for 2016. So anyway, thanks a lot for your support and uh, we'll see what I come up with next. <laughs>